good, Dan. All right, another week. Thanks for having me back. I'm glad you're here. Tell us what's going on at Connect Church. Well, at Connect Church, we're having our services online, and you can see those services at 2connectchurch.org. That's the number 2, connectchurch.org. Um, when you're on our website, it gives you uh, places to give. There's three ways to give. You can give by texting text to give, or you can go to the website and then click on the give button, or you can just place the check in the mail. Mm -hmm. So snail mail is never fail. Snail mail is slow. That's right. <laughs> well, we're thankful for anything that we can get. For anybody that's viewing us, we hope that you will give to the ministry so that we can continue on to spread God's word. We want to say thank you to you. When do you think we're going to be able to come back, Dan? Uh, I'm hoping by Easter Sunday. Uh, that'd be nice. Hopeful. That'd be nice. Yes. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that uh, the Connect Engineering team is working on, that would be Angie Smith, uh, we're going to do our fish groups. We're going to start using uh, Zoom for so we can meet in people's homes and have... Uh, have different people on the screen so we can kind of interact that way okay until so what you're saying is it's kind of like an app you download yeah. it to like your laptop or your phone yeah and then everybody can see everybody's face mm -hmm. okay yeah, and you, so then you can still teach the lesson yeah you can still have the lesson you can we can all watch the video then get on zoom and have discussion questions what we thought about the video okay. i don't know if we can watch the video on Zoom, or if we have to watch it independently. I think you have to watch it independently, and then they come together just to discuss it. I know this, what's on the screen now, is the Red Letter uh, Challenge, and I know the women's group, uh, a women's Bible study, is going to be doing that through Zoom. Uh, they have several people already signed up, even people that don't even live in our area. I know people from Waterloo signed up. Really? Uh, someone uh, near Kansas City, Missouri, has signed up. So uh, that's that's interesting and it's great news that we're reaching out and branching out. Yeah, the, you know, the men's group's going to be starting up too. Of course, we're not as quick and swift as the women, so we're probably <laughs> a couple of weeks behind. Uh, um, and I know Doug Gus at, uh, at Carla Guthrie's is going, uh -huh. going to be doing Traveling Light by Max and Cato. Okay. Um, I, I need to talk to Robbie and um, uh, your brother-in-law to see if, uh, if they're still going to be doing their... Um, study the one on um, the armor of God mm -hmm. and uh, you know we're anxious and excited to see that but the, the men's group's going to do this study as well well the study that was up there the red letter challenge so that's going to be awesome that way we can tuned. interact with our wives mm -hmm. they study it the men study it and then we got something to talk about but just keep uh, keep focus on the uh, on the website because as the changes come and as we get those things booted up we'll uh, making those announcements. Okay, website, Facebook, to keep everybody in touch. Uh, we also done something else, uh, Mike, that's kind of interesting. We've kind of divided up our church directory and our people that attend our church in, in, in the area of the city that they live. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to put uh, captains over those types of cities that will give everybody a call and check up on them, make sure they have their groceries or if they need medicine picked up. And we don't have to come in contact with anybody. We just want to pick it up, set it on your porch if that's what you need us to do. Uh, we want to be able to stay in touch, find out what your needs are, and be able to meet those needs. It's very difficult during a time like this when you're trying to social distance to try to keep the church connected. So the Zoom app is going to help uh, these people reaching out to these individuals through the phone call or a phone tree uh, is going to help. So these are good things that we're trying to do and develop uh, here at Connect. So we hope that you'll be a part of that and enjoy that also. Yeah. Also, we have uh, Wednesday night in the Word. Uh, Wednesday night, yeah, I'm going to be doing a Bible study uh, on Wednesday night. And uh, this Wednesday night that's coming up will be our first installment. And we're going to be recording it here uh, right where we're at. And uh, we're going to be presenting it to you. So on Wednesday night, you can set it home. You can watch us on Facebook, the website, or YouTube. And you can get a Bible study in. Uh, and so it's awesome. So it is our YouTube channel. You want to make sure that you write in the correct name. So it's Connect Church hyphen South Roxana. So make sure you put it in correctly. And when you do, especially in this, Mike, you gotta, this is important. You got to subscribe and it's free. Can you believe that? Totally free, Mike. Totally free. Totally free. And then whenever there's a posting from the church on YouTube, 
you'll always get a little icon on your phone or your tablet or your computer that says, hey, there's something else for you to view from that particular organization, such as Connect Church. So look for our church logo when you type in the name. Click on that, subscribe, and become a YouTuber with us. I like free. Hey, I do too. How you been getting along with this social distancing? Doing good. A friend of mine told me that uh, he goes to Walmart a lot. Mm -hmm. He said he thinks people need to start wearing uh, inflatable winter tubes uh -huh. because they're getting too close. <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah, I believe that. I, I got a, I got a one I've made myself. Oh, well, uh, I don't think but, <laughs> But the inner tube idea is, is a good idea. <laughs> People do need to stay away from each other as much as possible. I know there's certain things you can and can't do. Uh, but this virus is a very serious situation. As you noticed in the news, Mike, there's young people that's been uh, inflicted by it. There's older people that's uh, been affected by it. So uh, there's all these things that are going on right now in our society. And it's scary and it's uncertainty that we have. Mm -hmm. And so we need to... Uh, uh, make sure that we stay in touch not only with our church family, but also practice good common sense by staying away and doing what we can. Washing our hands yeah. and uh, not touching our face and uh, practicing social distancing. So. Right. See the elbow bumps. Yeah. Uh, that's all good advice, and I think if we follow that, um, I think we can get back together sooner. So. Yes. Are you excited about us coming back together, Mike? I am. I think uh, our president. Uh, said the other day on the news, he thinks that regionally and uh, segmentally, they can start bringing people back together. Um, I'm not sure the plan yet. I don't know if it's gonna be by age or by hot spots with this virus, so. That's good news. Yeah, I think it's, it gives us some type of hope, and I, I think his day is still, uh, still Easter, so. Well, good, I hope so, because Easter is a very important time for all of us to enjoy, and I hope that we can be back together uh, in the sanctuary together, worshiping together. But that doesn't mean that our webcast is ever going to stop. Now that we're into this and now that we're doing this, uh, just last week we had over 800 people that knew about us. We had over 460 people that watched us. Um, so this is all good news. We're reaching people that we had not might reached before. And it's very, very exciting. That is good. We might have to do it live and in there you go. Uh, we do both. That's right. Speaking of that, why don't we uh, why don't we get started with your message? All right. Sounds great. Right. Thanks, Mike, for Thank coming you. out. Thank you. Thank you, and we'll see you soon.
Church, we're glad that you joined us again for another broadcast here from our media room at Connect Church in South Roxana. We're glad that you're part of it. What I need you to do right now so we know that you're a part of our service is to take out your phone and check into on Facebook Connect Church. Just hit the check in button, Connect Church, and let us know that you are watching us uh, today. Whether you're on the website, whether you're on Facebook, or whether you're on YouTube, doesn't make any difference. Please check in uh, to the church. Uh, today we're going to be talking about living like Jesus. Live like Jesus. We're going to take our Bibles today and we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 23. And we're going to look at that out of the NIV today, the New International Version. So if you have your phone or tablet or, or your computer handy, you can turn that on. Or just your Bible that's there on the table next to you. Just turn that to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning with verse 19. Let's read that together. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible, to the Jews that became like a Jew, to win the Jews, to those under the law I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law, to those not having the law I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. To the weak I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in, the, in its blessings. So the key word here is found in verse 22 that I want to focus on today. And if we're going to live like Jesus, the words that I want to go is with what Paul said. I have become. So it wasn't a skill that the Apostle Paul had. It was a skill or a skill set that he had to learn. I have become. I have learned. I now know. And he says, I have become all things to all people to save some. In this day, in this day that we live in, it, it's very hard to be a, uh, an outreach Type focus when everybody's supposed to be staying in and staying in their house. But the apostle uh, Paul understood that days like this would come where we can't meet in church buildings. And he was in places where churches wasn't in, but in houses. And so they would worship there. And then people would take the gospel from door to door. The apostle Paul was literally a man that was free to do whatever he wanted to do. Uh, the scripture says, I, uh, I belong to no one. I, I'm free. I can do whatever I want. But he became a slave to everyone. So the question is, why did he become a slave? Why not just live out his life and, and not concern himself with anybody else? Why didn't Paul do that? Why didn't he just do that? Who cares what happens to others? If it doesn't affect me, why should I care? That's how Paul could have lived his life. But instead, he became a slave to everyone. Everybody. He was a bond servant to others. Why would he enslave himself? Why would he cause himself to be concerned about others and their well-being? Why should he care about the lives of other people around him? In this time of this virus, this pandemic that we're going through, and the uncertainty like I spoke of last week that's going on, why should we be concerned? Why should we care? Should we enslave ourselves with others around us. See, Jesus came to earth concerned only for mankind's salvation. 
He accomplished that by dying on the cross of Calvary. Paul is trying to live like Jesus. Paul is trying to be as much like Jesus as he possibly can be. He does, uh, he does uh, want to live like Jesus. So the question now is, how uh, should we live around others? And how can we live like Jesus in this uh, day and age? During a national crisis, Jesus should be at the forefront of compassion and grace. And as a church, we've got to find a way to be in the forefront of compassion and grace. We need to reach out to those who are in need. There's some of our elderly that can't get to their uh, to the drugstore to buy get their drugs uh, that they need to survive. Or their medicine for their heart, or their medicine for their diabetes, and so forth. There's some that can't go to the store and shop because they're physically not able. Their immune system is at a level to where if they get the virus, uh, they would be uh, hurt uh, very uh, critically in this time that we live. So uh, reaching out to those in need is important, and we've got to do that. Still practicing common sense, uh, uh, social distancing, but also remembering that we've got to be the church, even in times of an epidemic that is going on. And so as disciples of Jesus Christ, we need to make our presence known in our communities. We need to make sure that where we live, where we're at, our neighbors know that they can count on us uh, if they need something. And the people in our church, as we call them and contact them, they need to know they can count on us uh, when they need some. We may not be in a building, but we are the church. All right? We, we are the church personally. See, the building is not the church. And we found this out already. When you have over 400 people that watch you on Facebook, you find out that the building sometimes can constrain the gospel because instead of going outside the building, you're just keeping it in the building. We need to get outside the building and be the church that God's called us to be. That's why we are the church personally. It is our time to become all things to all people, just like Paul said. The question we need to ask is, what can I do and how can I help? What can I do and how can I help? What can I do as a disciple of Jesus Christ? What is it that Jesus wants me to do? How can I help others during this crisis? Well, I mentioned some by maybe taking them their prescriptions by or taking them to some food by uh, or going by and picking them something up to eat if they need it or picking them up and driving them somewhere if they need it. So what can I do to help people in crisis? Paul was on, intent on becoming whatever he could so that some might receive Jesus Christ. I am convinced that Paul would do whatever it took to win somebody for Jesus Christ. That's the attitude that we need to be. We need to have the same attitude to live like Jesus lived. Our goal should be similar as Paul's goal. Do whatever it takes to win somebody to Jesus Christ. We need to become more like Jesus so that we can lead others to salvation. Politicians often say, never let a crisis go to waste. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we can say the very same thing. People need to understand that government isn't going to solve all their problems. Many of you have heard in the news today that there's going to be a stimulus package that's going to go out and help everybody that's been out of work. And over 3 million people are unemployed now because of this crisis. But we've got to remember the government doesn't control our destiny. Jesus can change your destiny from whatever it is to what it can be. And that's life in Jesus Christ. See, Jesus is the hope that we need. The government doesn't give us hope. The government may give us a handout and a help up. But Jesus is the only, only one that can give us hope uh, that we need. People need to understand that only Jesus can solve all our problems and fulfill all of our needs. In Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 34, if you have your Bibles, turn there with me also. Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 34. The scripture says this, 
Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap and store, stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of your uh, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow and thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So don't worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. See, some of us might say that this is easier said than done, that we say, you know what, I'm just going to give it to God and let God worry about it. And we say, well, saying it's easy, but living it is another aspect of it and that's true you got to believe and you got to live it and sometimes we say it but sometimes we don't believe it and so we've got to get to a place where we believe what we're reading we got to believe what we're hearing but when you surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you will find that these verses are true for you and your family see jesus really does care about me and my situation all that he asks is that I trust and believe in him. He really does care. See, Paul had to become like Jesus in order to reach out to others for salvation. We need to become like Jesus so that we can reach people around us for Jesus. People now more than ever need to see that there's hope. Hope is found in Jesus. Hope is only found in Jesus. Not the government, not anyone else, just Jesus. See, Paul wanted to become more like Jesus so that he could share in the blessing of the gospel. That's what our scripture said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I want to share in the blessing of the gospel. The gospel is the good news with the power to save a soul from hell. Go, ladies and gentlemen, and live the good news of the gospel, especially now in this crisis. In conclusion, you may be asking yourself, what can I do? How can I make an impact in my community? Well, if you want to be a part of reaching out, we have an opportunity right now to reach up to 100 kids in our community. If you want to be a part of that and reach out to these kids in our community, contact us. And we will explain what you can do right now during this crisis to bring them hope. We've been contacted, they've asked us for the help, and we're going to try to reach out to them and be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, even during this crisis. If you want to be more like Jesus, you need to first receive the free gift Jesus offers. If you would, would you bow your head and pray this prayer, mean it from your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died and for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer and truly meant it in your heart, we believe that you're saved according to God's word. Please contact us so we can give you the next steps with Jesus' book. And we want to give this to you as a free gift to you because you've made your commitment to Jesus Christ. Once again, I want to say thank you for watching. I hope that you were blessed by this broadcast today. And if you in any way have made a change in your life, please let us know. Contact us, we ask. God bless you. See you next week.